going guys welcome back to today's video today we're going to talk about when is the best time like when is the best time to start preparing for the sat should you start early should you start late which one's better if it's your first time here my name is john and i've been helping students raise their sat score to the moon for the past decade and that's a super long time and i need to find better things to do with my time but today we're just going to go over when's the best time to start preparing for the sat so this video is going to be broken down into three separate parts. First one is going to be freshman year versus junior year. When should you start early versus later? Second, it's going to be reading and writing section and math section timing. Like how early can we start? Can we start second grade or can we start ninth grade or can we start in junior year? When's the best time or when can we actually start preparing for the SAT? And lastly, I'm going to go over a way for you to prepare as efficiently as possible because the most important thing is GPA is the most important thing and you want to minimize the time that goes into SAT and maximize the result that you get out of it so that your GPA is not affected by SAT prep. Okay, so let's get straight into it, guys. So let's get straight into it, guys. First one is going to be freshman year versus junior year. Should you start as a freshman or should you start as a junior? A quick answer is you need to start as soon as possible. And here's why. Most of you probably heard that high school gets busier as you go up the grade. Freshman year is going to be not as busy as the sophomore year, but junior year is going to be super busy compared to sophomore year or freshman year. So the later you go into high school, the busier it's gonna get and the less time you're gonna have laying around to do anything you want. And let's say you start preparing it junior year when you're the busiest and you add SAT on top of it. Jesus Christ, that's going to be so stressful and that's going to affect your GPA. And GPA is the most important thing when it comes to college admission. So you want to start as soon as possible so that you don't have to stress about it and worry about it in later years. Okay. Second one is junior year. Junior year, junior year is super important because that's when you're loading up on your high, um, honors classes and your AP classes. And to colleges, junior year is a great indicator on how you're going to perform when you come to colleges because AP classes are essentially college level classes and they want to see how well you perform in those classes. And let's say you are capable of acing these classes, but you are preparing for the SAT. So you spend a lot of time studying for the SAT and you bomb a test or two when it comes to AP classes. That's not going to look good when it comes to college admission. So you want to finish preparing for the SAT or at least a big chunk of it before you come to your junior year because that's the most important year. Okay. Lastly, the reason why you want to start early and not later is because just the overall nature of the SAT. SAT is a marathon. It's not a 100 meter sprint where you can just start preparing for like two weeks and just be done with it. SAT takes time. A lot of people ask, hey, John, I'm currently at 1200 and my exam is in about two weeks. If I if I skip school for the next two weeks and study 16 hours a day and not even go to the bathroom, will I be able to get my score up to 1500? Can I do that? And my answer always is no. SAT is not a type of exam where you just study for 16 hours a day and just go from 1200 to 1500 in two weeks. That's just not possible. It's a lot more realistic for you to study maybe like an hour every other day and over a long period of time you're more likely to go from 1200 to 1500 with this method rather than just studying for 16 hours a day for two weeks. That's just not going to work. It takes a long time. SAT is a marathon. That's why you want to start as early as possible. Okay. All right. So second, how soon can we start reading, writing and math section? Because if you start too early, you probably haven't learned all the stuff that shows up on the exam. That's why people wait until junior, junior year, but by junior year, you probably have learned everything, but you're just you're just out of time. You don't have time and junior year is just too busy. So how early can we start? It depends on um, each section. Okay, so reading section is mainly testing your reading skills, right? So if you as long as you know how to read, as long as you know English and how to know how to read, you can start preparing for the reading section. Honestly, the reading section is the only one where you can start practicing like sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth grade. I mean sixth, seventh, eighth grade is kind of overkill, but you can start preparing. If I were to go back to middle school, honestly, I would just like slap myself in the face and be like, hey, start preparing for the SAT in eighth grade. Because reading section is one of those sections that takes a lot of time and I suck at reading. So reading, as long as you know how to read, you're going to be good to go. Just start as soon as possible. Writing section, what it tests is it tests your ability or your knowledge on grammars. Okay. So every school is different. Every state, every county is different. In my school, we finished learning all the grammar stuff in eighth grade. So my 
freshman year, I was I had every single knowledge I need to start preparing for the writing section. So just check when you're when you guys are going to be done learning all the grammar stuff. Okay, math. SAT math covers all the way from fresh, uh, your first grade up until Algebra 2, okay? So for everyone, Algebra 2 is going to be different when, when they finish it. Some people finish like junior year, some people finish freshman year, but you wanna wait until Algebra 2 because SAT covers up until there. And let's say you are at maybe like Algebra 1, you don't wanna start preparing for the SAT because there will be way too much stuff on the exams that you have never seen before and it's going to be like 10 times more stressful. Don't start. Are you at geometry? Because math goes from algebra one, geometry, algebra two, at least around around my area. If you're at algebra, if you're at geometry, don't don't do it. If you're at algebra two, wait until the course is finished, then start preparing. If you're if you're if it's like if you're at um let's see, if you're currently at algebra two and you're starting to get anxious, then start preparing for reading section and writing section because you probably have learned all the reading stuff and writing stuff by wherever you are now. Long story short, wait until you finish Algebra 2, otherwise you're going to have struggle 10 times more, okay? Third, how to prepare efficiently. Now that you know when to prepare for like each section, how can we prepare for it efficiently? When it comes to efficiency, the most important thing is understand, understanding how super scoring works. And there's a video on it, I made it, and it's going to be linked that right there. And I'll, I'm also going to leave a link in the description box below. I'm going to explain in detail how you can utilize super scoring to maximize your score without without going like without overkilling it. And if you understand how super scoring works, you're pro you probably came down to, okay, should I start with reading and writing or should I start with math, okay? My recommendation is start with whatever you're good at. If you're good at reading and writing, start with that. If you're good at math, but stuck at reading and writing like I did, just start with math. Like just pick one and just focus on it, get the high score and then move on to the next thing, okay? Let's say you suck at both, then which one should you start with? If that's the scenario, definitely recommend starting with math. And here's reasons why. First one is that for math, at least, there is a clear cut instruction and lessons on what shows up on the exam, at least for math section, okay? For example, let's say you suck at like exponents, quadratics, and triangles. If you suck at those three things, what you can do is you can get a book on um, SAT math concept and just like go drill down on these three things. And if you get these things right, your score is going to improve, right? For math, there is a clear cut instructions on what you need to do to improve your score. However, for reading, let's say you suck at reading. Let's say your ability to read, read and understand stuff just sucks it just sucks mass balls what are you gonna do most people say just hey just read a lot just read some times magazines to read some newspapers whatever but there is not a clear cut direction like how do like how can we tell that reading these reading these magazines and these newspapers are actually helping us helping our ability to read you, you can't you can't there's not a clear cut guidance on what to do for the reading section Whereas for math section, there is a book, there is a concept that you need to look at, and if you look at those, you're good to go. It's clear versus it's not clear. That's why you wanna start with math first. And second, it's two subjects versus one. Here's what I mean. For reading, it's essentially, they call it the reading section with 800 points, but it's essentially reading and writing section, and their scores add up to 800 points, okay? Which means you have to prepare for reading section and writing section in order for you to raise your reading score as much as possible, right? You're essentially preparing for two sections at the same time. However, for math, if you wanna raise your math score, you just need to prepare for math and you're good. That's just one section, okay? Do you see that? Two sections you have to prepare for versus one section. I think one section is easier. If you think two is easier, hey, by all means, go ahead. And let's say you have committed to just working on math first. How can we start? Well, the first step, the very first step is for you to identify exactly where you are first. Because whether if you are at 400 and let's say someone else is at like 600, their, their strategy on how they should study is completely different, okay? Depending on where you are at in terms of score, the way that you should prepare is a lot different, okay? That's why the first thing you need to do is understand where you are first, okay? So there's also a video I made on how to prepare for each score group. I go super in depth. You can check it out in the description box below. But the very first step is for you to take the practice exam and make sure you find out exactly what your score is, okay? Once you can do that, watch the video and you're gonna know exactly what to do, okay? 
All right, that's going to be it for today's video. We're gonna quickly summarize because you probably don't remember all the stuff I said. So I'm gonna quickly run it down. Today's topic was when should you start preparing for the SAT? First thing we went over was freshman year versus junior year. When should you start? Hey, start as soon as possible. Why? Because of the nature of the SAT. It's a marathon, it's not a sprint. It's gonna take a lot of time. You wanna work one hour every other day for a long period of time rather than studying 16 hours a day for the next two weeks, okay? Also, junior year. Junior year gets super busy and it's super important and we wanna make sure that SAT prep doesn't affect your junior year GPAs. That's why you wanna start early and finish as early as possible, okay? Second, reading and writing and math timing. How soon can we start? For reading and writing, just start preparing as soon as you finish grammar lessons, okay? If you, if you learn all the grammar stuff, like run-ons, fragments, punctuations, all that good stuff, tenses, if you have learned all those things, you can start preparing reading and writing. However, for math, it covers up until Algebra 2. So make sure you wait until Algebra 2. If you're at Algebra 1, don't even bother starting because you are going to be 10 times stressed out and you're, you're gonna wanna like drop out of high school and not go to college at all. So don't do that. Wait until Algebra 2. And lastly, how to prepare efficiently. You wanna prepare as efficiently as possible to minimize the time that goes into it and maximize the result that you get out of it so your GPA is affected minimally, okay? How do we do that? First thing is going to be super scoring. You want to understand how super scoring works so you can use it to your advantage. There's going to be a video in the link down below in the description box. And second, you want to start with math first, okay? The reason being is it's relatively easier. There's a clear cut guidance. And second reason is two topics versus one topic. Reading and writing is just, you have to study for reading section and writing section at the same time, but math is just one section, okay? So now that you want to start preparing for math section, what's the first step? What you want to do is you want to identify exactly where you're first because you're not going to know what to do unless you know where you are okay so thing is take a diagnostics uh exam see what your score is and then go to the video below and then you can find out exactly what to do for your score level i mean score range okay all right guys so that's going to be it for today's video let me know what you guys thought about this topic do you have any comments do you have any questions leave them down in the comment box below and also let me know what you guys thought about this overall structure because i'm used to just filming the video and then just treating it like a vlog video regular video but i decided to add this like bullet points on the side so that you guys can clearly follow what i'm talking about and when you like go back you can easily understand what we just talked about here okay so let me know what you thought about the structure. And if you liked the video, guys, make sure you hit the like button. And if you guys love the video, make sure you hit the subscribe button because I release this kind of video every single week where we go over tips and tricks when it comes to SAT and college admission and everything I learned as a high school student and what I've learned as a tutor for the past decade. These tips and tricks are what's going to give you an extra edge when it comes to college admission and SAT prep, and it's going to help you get to the college of your dreams. Anyways, guys, that's going to be it for today's video. If there is a topic that you want to see next, let me know in the comment section below because the videos that I make for this channel is heavily and heavily influenced by what you guys want to see. So that's it for today. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Just look at me, and I, I got that gold rolly with the bezel and Louis Vuitton on my body, and I know this shit don't impress you, so no bullshit, girl, nothing extra. Girl, I ain't with playing games. I wanna take your home. Girl, you do, baby, you must look at me, and I, I got that gold rolly with the bezel and Louis Vuitton on my body. And I know this shit don't impress you So no bullshit, girl, nothing extra Girl, I ain't with playing games I wanna take your home